7 Tips for Working Students Are you ready? Let's go! Whether you're young or old, balancing your life and you are a working student is always a difficult task. Believe me, you have to have enough time to not only attend college but also to study hard, complete all of your assignments to a high standard, put in the hours at work and deal with anything else that comes your way. It seems to be like impossible. Well, it won't always be easy, I got you, but certainly still doable. And why we completely agree that some days there just won't be enough time in the day, there are also plenty of instances where you without realizing it won't make effective use of your time. Hello, my name is Enrique from Study Bay. Slap like on this video by the way, subscribe and make a comment if you are also a working student and share with us your difficulties. Thanks! So on the days where your time management skills are less than desirable, you'll notice yourself struggling to complete everything that needs to get done. And if it happens too often, you can feel like giving up. However, that's where we come in. Check out our guide for 7 tips for working students to help you understand how to manage your time constructively and strike up that study work balance you really need. First tip, never underestimate a routine for study. Routine can evoke negative feelings in a lot of people, sure. A lot of people love the idea of routine and order, but for others, the word routine can most like a synonym of boring or unexciting. But when it comes to study, a routine is a must. When you have a lot on your plate, frequently switching between tasks or projects is highly ineffective. Our brain needs to focus one thing at a time to do it well. And this is where routine comes in handy. If possible, dedicate some time to study, preferably each day at the same time. This way your body and mind can develop a habit of routine of knowing that this is study time and 100% of your focus and concentration can be given. Use props during this time if necessary to help you block out the world and concentrate better. Maybe you could try some headphones that are noise cancelling or soft background music that you find not distracting. Even set up a relaxing mood with candles, if you want, aromatic sticks, just anything that helps you settle into full focus. Tip number two, take your studies with you, always. <laughs> How many times have you been on your way to college or at work by bus and just mindlessly scrolling through your phone, probably most days? How many times do you mindlessly scroll through your phone while you're waiting for a friend to get ready or for dinner to finish cooking? Again, most of the days probably. There are a hundred different scenarios where we are all guilty of using the time by mindlessly scrolling through our phones. You have to start making use of this short period of time. Keep important notes on your phone or in your bag. Take any books or other resources around with you or keep any audios on your phone. Ask your professor if there are any helpful audios you can access or any parts of the lessons that you are allowed to record for study notes. Or just record it anyways. Well, the thing is, every time that you are attempted to mindlessly scroll through your phone, whip up your notes or put an audio instead. Even just 10 minutes here and there can make a real difference, especially if it happens regularly. Tip number three, set goals for study time. If you speak with your professor, they will let you know the minimum amount of time that are recommended for you to study for the course per week. Do your best to, in the very least, do it as amount. As a general rule, with studying time, for each credit per hour course, you should be studying two hours more. So, for example, if you are taking a four hours credit, you should be studying eight hours per week. So make a note of the amounts you need to be studying and keep tally per week to be sure that you don't fall behind. To make it easier, you can make a little chart or keep track and distribute your allowance of time efficiently based on what's priority or what is you need to be studying at that time, the hardest one first and then later on what is easier for you. Under no circumstances should you ever leave big assignments or projects to the very last minute. Work on this first, they will always be worth more than the percentage towards your grade. So the bigger the project, the bigger the priority. Tip number four, be consciously wise, especially if you are a working student with your time. 
Things like calendars or bullet journals can be extremely useful at helping you to become an expert at time management. It's quite possible that you will have a schedule at your workplace. Schedules are used as they are a great and clear way for everyone to know who is working at which time and the running of the workplace can flow smoothly. Therefore, use a similar system, write up a schedule and mark off which times you are working in another color, mark off the times you are free. I mean, this includes free from lectures and other regular responsibilities you have. Now you can clearly see the times you have available to study and to complete your assignments. Try your best to use this time wisely. It doesn't matter if you have three hours free or one hour free, it all adds up and when the end of the week comes, you will be thankful that you had time to study every chance you got. Another way to use your time wisely is when it comes to sleeping. Don't think that Staying awake a little bit more to complete college work is a good use of your time. Actually, it will have the opposite effect in the long term. If you stay up late, we can guarantee that you will feel sluggish the following day. And if it happens a couple of days in a trot, then your brain will not be functioning well. So for the sake of pushing yourself too hard one night, you have now slowed her down during the week. So believe me, it's never worth it. Get the amount of sleep you need every night to function well, because you will do a lot of more good quality work by being alert and in shape. Tip number five, don't do too much too soon. Having a job while you are in college doesn't mean that you have to be working a 40 hours a week, or it doesn't even mean that you have to be working a 20 hour week. If you can, get in a job that has flexibility, well, this is the best kind of work to have, especially when you just start at college. During your first year, everything is going to be new and exhausting. It's going to take some time for you, not only to settle into your surroundings, but also your studies. So, for the first year, at least, it's not always a good idea to take on too much work-wise. A side job such as babysitting or leaflet distribution is a great way to earn some money without having a huge commitment. Once you feel comfortable that you are settled into college life, then you can look at taking a more commitment and serious job with more hours. But again, your schoolwork should never suffer from the sake of you having a more intense job. Tip number six, if you need help, then ask. Never forget that your professors or boss will most likely be very accommodating if you need help. Most people have been in the situation that you are and they understand how it feels to be juggling, studying and working. So if any part of your study or working life starts to get too much, well, then just reach out to your boss or professor and let them know that you need help. If you need an extension on a deadline, then ask for it. If you need to swap a shift at work and to get more studying done during a particular important week, then just ask. If you need clarification or anything, then simply ask. Most worries or problems that you will face as a working student can be solved with communication, by asking for help. So never feel embarrassed if you need it. It's completely normal to feel like, you know, that you are struggling and you will get a lot better afterward. And of course, you can always find help on Study Bay, where a lot of experts will definitely help you with your study. Making a schedule or tutoring, you know, Study Bay, we are here to help you. We help students. Last tip, tip number seven. Use effective de-stressing methods. We all use different methods to help us de-stress. And what works for others might not work for you. But with so many different ways to relax, one can always find something for them. We are going to describe some great methods to help you keep a calm and relaxed head as often as possible. Exercise. I'm more than positive that you heard this 100 times before and it's because it's completely true and very valuable. We all know that exercising helps with the release of a lot of hormones, for example, endorphins. These happy hormones will work wonder on lifting your mood and clearing your head. If you are not a fan of exercise, just a 20 or 30 minute walk a day could do all the benefits and you can get a lot better and feel less anxious. Do yoga, do breathing techniques, just try something out. Napping. Napping is not a sign of laziness. Napping for around 15 to 20 minutes each time has been proven to completely refresh your mind and body. So effective that for many countries, a nap is a standard part of the day. 
However, though I know it's tempting, don't nap for longer than 20 minutes because your body will fall into a deep sleep, thus making you feel groggy when you wake up. 20 minutes is all you need to wake up in an optimal state. Water, water, water. Mm, did I mention water? Well, keep yourself hydrated by regularly drinking water. Water is essential to keep your mind and body in tip-top shape. Just think about the headaches you feel when you are dehydrated or when you wake up and you're just like, whoa. Drinking water is an easy way to keep your body working well, pretty well. How epical is that? Don't use electronics. Well, I know it's pretty hard, at least not too much, especially in your bedroom. At the end of each night, allow yourself to have 20 minutes of nothing. No phones, no TVs, no video games, nothing at all. Just lay down in bed, breathe and relax. Having some time before you fall asleep without any stimulus is a great way to play our minds and help us to sleep better. Be social, but within reason. Of course, you cannot spend your whole college life switching between your bedroom, lecture room and work. You need to socialize and have some recreational activities. Otherwise, you might just go insane. However, don't go overboard. Being with friends is great for your mood and well-being, but hanging out with friends every night when you should be studying is not okay. Be social, but don't make it as important as your studies. As a working student, you need to have your expectations set and know that your time in college is not going to be easy. It's going to be tough at times, and you are not a superhuman. No one can perfectly deal with studying and working, but being realistic, at first, with your limitations and managing your time as efficiently as possible, you'll be able to get through college without too many hiccups and who knows, you might just have fun along the way. Well guys, I honestly wish you the best of luck and remember, if you have been stuck in a situation where you could not combine like study with work, you know, you can always find help at studybay.com. Don't forget to subscribe, slap like on this video Make a comment, what do you think about working and studying? Is it like possible or should you try to be a superhuman? Well, thanks for watching and I'm Enrique from Study Bay, always a pleasure.